Hey, welcome in Monday edition Bruce Hooley show. It is March the 18th, the day before the primary. We're going to have two candidates on in the second hour of the program. I invite you to listen to that or uh, watch it on our Facebook page, Bruce Hooley show, Facebook page, 989theanswer.com Facebook page. You can watch the first hour on any of my social media sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. We're about to get started here talking, of course, about what else other than the media misportraying Donald Trump's comments in Dayton on Saturday. Hopefully it won't be a bloodbath, but we're going to have some fun and we're glad you're with us. Thanks for joining. Well, hopefully this won't be a bloodbath. Welcome in to the Bruce Hooley Show. We're having a malfunction. Am I with you? I am not with you. I don't know what's going on, but I apologize to those of you who are watching online. And we are working to get our audio figured out. Uh, we've got all the buttons pressed that are normally pressed to make things work, but they're not working. So, uh, hey, there we are. There we are. Thank you. I can tell the difference now. Welcome in to a Monday edition of the Bruce Lee Show. Glad to have you with us. And uh, yeah, it was a malfunction, but it wasn't a bloodbath. Okay, let's be honest. All right. Uh, but we are going to talk about a uh, bloodbath. Uh, no, no, no. That's okay. No, I'm always glad to have Alan Rogers flying the ship and uh, we'll interact with Alan throughout the day. Uh, Alan is not a diversity, equity or inclusion hire. He knows how to fly the ship. He was hired on merit. He was not hired on diversity, equity or inclusion. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, you hate when the wrong pot's lit up. That's a bad thing. No worries. No worries. Uh, we will start with uh, the Donald Trump comments at the uh, Bernie Moreno rally in Dayton on Saturday. Uh, it was a bloodbath uh, in the aftermath of what Trump said, a bloodbath for journalistic integrity. Uh, journalism is dead in this country. And I don't say that um, without a little pang of regret uh, because I gave my career uh, to that profession. Uh, I thought it was an honorable profession. I didn't think it through at the time in terms of how much money could I make? I looked at it in terms of what good could I do? If I told the truth, if I held to the ethics and integrity of my profession, um, could I affect the world in some teeny weeny way for better? And I was pretty convinced I could. I was inspired by uh, the Watergate revelations published in the Washington Post. It dovetailed with my um, contrarian nature, and it's deeply disappointing and heartbreaking to me to see what journalism has become on a wide scale. Look, if we had a balance in media today where we had some of the major networks that didn't lick the boots of the Democratic politicians, it would be different. But it's not a coincidence that the aftermath of Trump's comments on Saturday, and I'll play them for you in a moment. It only takes about a minute to listen to him because uh, while he often rambles and his point is made four minutes after he starts talking about a topic and he starts talking about a topic and then he goes off on some other tangent. Well, this was not that case. Okay, This was a very concise point Trump was making about the U.S. auto industry and the damage to the auto industry if Chinese made cars are made in Mexico and allowed to be sold in America cheaper than American cars. That's what he was talking about. It's very clear that's what he was talking about. But that's not what it's been portrayed as because he used the word bloodbath. Now, I can find audio online and I could play audio online for you where Democrats 
talk about bloodbath. Oh, Nikki Haley's going to South Carolina. It's going to be a bloodbath. Donald Trump's going to like, he's going to like put her in the throes of a bloodbath electorally. That's fine for Democrats to say. It's not overstatement. It's just a harmless metaphor. But while we talk about this today, the Supreme Court is at this very hour or soon going to be hearing arguments. Pay close attention to this. The federal government has appealed to the Supreme Court a ruling from a U.S. district court in Missouri that the Biden administration, multiple officials in the Biden administration, including the Surgeon General and others colluded with social media organizations and big tech to silence speech in violation of the First Amendment. You know what we're talking about, right? The Hunter Biden laptop story. We're talking about COVID, where Jay Bhattacharya, Marty Makari, other distinguished doctors, Oxford, Stanford, couldn't say, even voice questions about the efficacy of the vaccines or boosters or the wisdom of young people being out of school or couldn't say it. And I mean, it's hard for me to make these words pass my lips. <laughs> Points for honesty to the Biden administration. This was uh, Circleback Saki, the forerunner to uh, Corinne Jean identity hire. When these rumors and stories started to first come up about what the Biden administration was doing to silence speech, uh, she didn't deny it. She was pretty obvious about what Joe Biden thought justified him doing all this. Life-threatening. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, uh, so then she was asked, do you contact, you admit now then you're contacting social media organizations and telling them Twitter before Elon Musk bought it, before Elon Musk owned it, Facebook, don't run this information, block it. Remember the Hunter Biden laptop story? You couldn't retweet it. You couldn't read it. You couldn't remember that. Here was her explanation saying, yes, we're doing this. And yes, we should be allowed to do this. First Amendment be damned. Okay. Now, I don't know what they're saying when she says we're just like we're in touch with you. No, not just like you're in touch with the Wall Street Journal, Fox News. I'm sure at, at NBC and CBS and Axios and the Independent and others, the White House can call and say, don't run that story. Don't write it that way. And they'll comply. But it's not just like it is at Fox or it is at Daily Wire or it is at Red State or townhall.com. The White House can't call and say, don't run that because those organizations will say, go pound sand. Okay, so it's not the same because they don't have a monopoly on print media, but they had a monopoly before Musk owned Twitter. They had a monopoly in social media, which is largely how news gets out. Most people say they get their news from <coughs> TikTok, or they get their news from Twitter, or they get their news from Facebook. They're not watching TV. That's why cable ratings are in the toilet, okay? And thankfully they are because Joe Scarborough's on, on, uh, <laughs> on network TV. So I say all that, the case they're going to hear today, the White House making no bones about the fact that they censor speech, the media, big media, network media, influencers like that are all in the bag for the Biden administration. They hate Republicans. They hate Trump with a, they are so delusional on Trump that this is what Donald Trump said on Saturday in Dayton at a rally for Bernie Moreno, Trump is talking about the U.S. auto industry. I don't. I didn't even need to tell you that. He'll tell you what he's talking about.
Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about the U.S. auto industry, and he says the damage economically, that'll be the least of it. Here's Joe Scarborough this morning on MSNBC. Yeah, you are. You're more than stupid. You're evil. And it's not just nationally. Here's Daryl Rowland, who works for WSYX Channel 6 here in town. To allege the press is taking Donald Trump's bloodbath quote out of context ignores very many who did have the context. To say otherwise is just getting lazy, not even trying. What a lie. A mix of sun and clouds this afternoon with a rain or snow I'm so shower sorry in about spots that. It's really getting colder today with a high 36. Tonight becoming cloudy, chilly with a low 27. Tomorrow's a cloudy, windy day, but milder. We're going up to 50. Clouds and sun Wednesday, windy with a high 49. Thursday, partly sunny, chilly, the high 43. Thick clouds Friday, a little rain, the high 49. Rose Tamburino on 98.9 FM, The Answer. Ryan Stewart answered the call of duty on 9-11. The U.S. Army sent Ryan to fight in Baghdad, where he earned the Combat Infantryman's Badge. Ryan will tell you what you've gone to war and been shot at. Tensions and suits can't scare you. That's why he led the charge to get criminal speaker Larry Householder the boot. Ryan Stewart kicked Larry out of the state house and repealed a billion-dollar scam. He's protected by stopping transgender surgeries in Ohio, and through tax cuts for Ohio families, and stood proudly with President Trump. We will lead our country back to safety, prosperity, and peace. Uh, a new sponsor coming up. Can't wait to tell you about it. And I'm excited about uh, what lies ahead in the 12 o'clock hour today, which, as I said at the top, you can watch on the Bruce Hooley Show Facebook page. No, the yeah, the Bruce Hooley Show Facebook page, the 989theanswer.com Facebook page. That's our number two. We'll have Brennan Shea, Madison County Commissioner candidate, Patty Hamilton, Ohio House candidate. Uh, I'll give you my other recommendations for the primary tomorrow. And so uh, stay tuned for that. Looking forward to it. And a couple great candidates that I hope you'll remember when you go to the polls. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth, and if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes, and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America number one tax relief firm. Optimus tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Look it up some polling here on uh, percentage of Americans who trust the media. Optima tax relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Who are the people that serve part-time in the Ohio Army National Guard? We are your neighbors and friends. We are your sons and daughters. Our service is providing us valuable job skills, and it pays up to 100% of our tuition. We're proud to serve our state. We are your Ohio Army National Guard. Learn more about part-time service with the Ohio Army National Guard at nationalguard.com. Sponsored by the Ohio Army National Guard, aired by the Ohio Association of Broadcasters at this station. Here's great news. If you plan on attending Ohio Coming back soon. University right. New traditional student, this fall semester at the Circle Hill campus, you can receive a $5,000 tuition scholarship for only $2,500. That's right. A $5,000 tuition scholarship for only $2,500. 
one scholarship per student, and all Ohio Christian University admission requirements must be met. Learn more at 989theanswer.com or call RMAT at 614-216-5049. Hey, I had the chance on uh, Saturday to head to Dayton for the state girls basketball tournament. Saw a lot of people that I hadn't seen in a long time, and they knew about my medical diagnosis. And they came up, and they're like, how you doing? Appreciate that. And they wanted to see the scar, some of them. And so I'd take my hat off, and they'd look at the scar from my brain surgery, and they'd be like, I can't even see it. They did a great job. I'm like, yeah, they did a great job, but God did a great job because your body is made to heal. But sometimes it needs a little bit of help, right? You know that. You got hip pain, you got arm pain, you got joint pain, you want to get out, you want to work in the yard. Excited to tell you about QC Kinetics. What does QC Kinetics do? Well, it allows your body to do what it's made to do, what it's uniquely, divinely designed to do, which is heal. How do they do it? They take the platelets, the healing elements in your body, and they concentrate them and they give them back to your body. You can Schedule a free consultation today to find out if this works for you. QC Kinetics, 380-208-4544, 380-208-4544. That's 380-208-4544, QC Kinetics. I've had a lot of people ask me about who I'm voting for in the primary, which is tomorrow. And then Wednesday, we will be at the Lazy Chameleon in Powell starting at six o'clock. Doors open. Got to have a ticket. If you wanted a ticket and didn't get a ticket, I hate to tell you this. It's too late. We are sold out. And we're looking forward to an intimate gathering of around 100 people at the Lazy Chameleon on Wednesday night with Mike Gallagher coming in from Tampa, host of the Mike Gallagher Show. We'll talk politics. We'll talk. I'm sure we'll talk media. Uh, we'll talk about a lot of things, Mike Gallagher and Jack Windsor. If you don't know, Jack Windsor is hosting the Windsor Report at five o'clock every day here on The Answer. So you don't have to put up with idiotic nonsense on the afternoons in your radio dial in Columbus. You can listen to Jack Windsor updating you on the facts, the truth of the day as it concerns Ohio politics and national politics. Now, speaking of the nonsense in political reporting, uh, all across uh, political media over the weekend, uh, the headlines were pretty unified in vilifying Donald Trump for daring to say that if he is not elected president, there will be a bloodbath in the U.S. auto industry uh, because of the fact that Biden and the Democrats will allow Chinese-made cars built in Mexico, Chinese designed cars built in Mexico to come across into the American car market and undersell American cars. A bloodbath, Trump said. Here's the short version of what Trump had to say. It's very clear what he's talking about. He's not talking about anarchy in the streets or anything like that. He's talking about the damage to the U.S. auto industry. All right, so he's talking about the cars. Here's James Freeman, Wall Street Journal. Uh, and the Wall Street Journal is not in a bag for Trump. They're more conservative than uh, they are liberal. But uh, James Freeman talking about, you know, this is uh, obvious what he's talking about. And the media just continues to shoot itself in the foot by lying to the American people who, I mean, it's effective because a lot of people hear it and aren't discerning listeners and won't investigate it themselves. You'll notice when any of these media outlets say, oh, Trump said bloodbath, they'll either cut it before he talks about the auto industry, before he talks about cars, or they just won't play the Trump cut at all. But here's James Freeman, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, he's right. A lot of people in the media industry could move back toward credibility here. This is not even when I heard this. I mean, I heard the histrionics first because I was working uh, Saturday. I heard the histrionics first. Like, oh, Trump said bloodbath. Oh, bloodbath. Oh, I don't like. OK, he stepped in it again. He steps in it all the time. This is my thing with him. Can he win? Yes. 
only if he stays focused on Biden. If he gives the media these kinds of things to work with, it doesn't help. But this was like, when I heard the actual comment, I'm like, that's not even close enough to where they could reposition it and people be hoodwinked by it. I was like, of all the times. But listen, here's a, a Democratic idiot, but, you know, I repeat myself, named Michael Taylor on MSNBC. Never heard of this guy before uh, with this kind of insight and accuracy. Probably never hear from him again, except he'll certainly be invited back on MSNBC, uh, regurgitating this lie and others from Trump's past as a political candidate. Oh. I have no doubt that's what Michael Taylor heard, uh, but what he heard is not in any of those instances what Donald Trump said. Now, if you want to listen to a politician advocate for continued violence in the streets, uh, let me take you back to the summer of 2020. Here is, uh, who's the moron on the CBS that has the late night show? Oh, Stephen Colbert. Uh, with Kamala Harris on Zoom, of course, because this was the summer of 2020 and, you know, germophobia uh, flourished on the Democratic side of the aisle. Uh, they couldn't get within a thousand feet of each other, even with masks on. So Kamala's on Zoom talking to Stephen Colbert about the riots all over the country in the aftermath of George Floyd dying in Minneapolis. And uh, is Kamala trying to calm the violence in the streets here or is she advocating for more violence uh, everyone should be aware the riots are not going to stop. They're not going to let up and they should not. That is the that is the person who was at that point in time campaigning to be vice president of the United States, advocating for violence in the United States of America, which they accuse Trump of doing every single day. Oh, proud boys, stand up and stand up. The comment to the proud boys, it wasn't like, hey, stand by, wait, wait. Wait to key the riots till I get elected. It was in a presidential debate where Chris Wallace was hectoring him about what? What would you say to the Proud Boys right now? What would you say? Oh, Trump's like, I don't know. He's I'm in the middle of trying to rip on Joe Biden. Stand, stand. He got tongue tied. Stand up. Stand by. Stand. Whatever. Stand down. Oh uh, my God. And by the way. Was the woman in Charlottesville killed by the Nazis? Wasn't wasn't the like the Charlottesville person like hit by a car that someone was driving? Like, did we have Herman Goering goose stepping through the streets of Charlotte and Trump leading them on, cheering them on? I, Michael Taylor heard that. He saw it. He believes it. He's espousing it right now. But this is the game they're playing and the game they're going to continue to play because they can hoodwink people who don't investigate what really happened. Wholly inappropriate is how Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu described Senate Minority Leader Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's call for new elections in Israel. Netanyahu says an election would force Israel to stop fighting and would paralyze the right. country for months. As expected, Vladimir Putin has won the Russian presidential election. Shocker! Vladimir Putin's won the Russian election. I think we're all stunned by that. Evacuated from the nation <laughs> aboard a U.S. government-chartered aircraft. It took a while, but a monster wildfire, the smokehouse creek blaze in the Texas Panhandle, has now been fully contained. Three people killed and infamous hospitalized in critical condition 
after an SUV Staple a there is. in San Francisco over the weekend. Watching the Dow is up 179 points, NASDAQ ahead 217 points. More details at SRN News. This is Dennis Prager. I am excited to announce the all new PragerTopia Plus. You can listen to my show whenever it's convenient for you, all commercial free and all on demand. Now with Prager Plus, search topics, guests, and segments all the way back to 2010. And now a truly exciting new benefit, my monthly online video get-together for PragerTopia Plus members only. This is where for an hour each month, PragerTopia Plus members get an exclusive chance to ask me anything. That's right, anything. It's on video. I'll be talking to you and answering your questions. We may even have a special guest every now and then. I've never done this. Submit your questions for me at PragerTopia.com. This is only available to PragerTopia Plus members. This is our chance to connect like never before. Go to PragerTopia.com or click the banner at that. We are strong and we'll get through this together. A few successful times. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, and know that you are not alone. Visit WeAreBroadcasters.com slash host. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and the station. All right. In a Massachusetts courtroom, the judge took the defendant shredded evidence in the case. The defendant, Maria, who was sued for stealing his employee's pay. So before the trial, Maria shredded the evidence against him. Shady Mr. the pattern of the year, who quietly supported Campus to get Maria to be a witness, but now pretends otherwise. He can tell a lot of things characterized by Dallas and Williams. Bernie Marino points that test. And Secretary of State Frank LaRose is no better. LaRose quietly spent your tax dollars to benefit himself politically. And LaRose changed Ohio's ballot language to affect the election results. It was a breach of public trust. Bernie Marino and Frank LaRose, if they're this sneaky and corrupt in Ohio, just imagine if they go to Washington. Buckeye leadership on May 4 and is responsible for the content of his advertising. Now, Hawkeye, the only candidate for the Republican committee, Buckeye's lead on the board. From breaking news and weather across the country to insight from the brightest minds in conservative opinion, it's Salem News Channel, home to the biggest shows on TV, like you, Tuesdays at 6 a.m. Eastern, followed by Mike Gallagher at 9. Join SMC, where facts are sacred, critical thinking is celebrated, and the pursuit of truth is unwavering. Watch Salem News Channel free. Now on Zumo Play. Learn more at sc.tv slash Zumo. News, opinion, passion. Here, 98.9 FM, the answer. Anywhere you go with the answers, mobile app at 98.9 theanswer.com. Also on your smart speakers, tune in or I. Well, you know where I'll be this afternoon? In the offices of Soft Step Carpet. In Plain City, just down the road from Costco on 161. Easy to get to. You need new flooring? Interested in new flooring? You should be interested in new flooring. Spring is a great time to redecorate your home, and there's no better place to do it at Soft Step and no better person to do it with than me. I'd love to help you. I was over at my friend John's house on Friday, measured his space. We're going to get him hooked up. We can get you hooked up too. You'll save money and you'll get your carpet installed faster or your LVP flooring. John may go with that. We'll be happy to price it either way to make it work for you. We have all the major brands. People rave about our installers. They rave about our prices. We don't have the expensive overhead, but man, are our products outstanding. Soft Step Carpet, the number in the office, 614-873-0001. Or you can deal with me directly. Email me, brucehooley at gmail.com, brucehooley at gmail.com. Or go to brucehooley.com and fill out the flooring form, and I'll reach out, and we'll get it done on behalf of soft step carpet and flooring in Plain City. I know this will shock uh, those of you who have uh, watched Joe Biden, uh, who is uh, so measured and so calm. Uh, NBC News reports, uh, bootleg media reports, that uh, in a private meeting at the White House in January, Two months ago, Joe Biden was seething. What did uh, his ice cream not get delivered to the White House? Was the Easter Bunny late in keeping him from uh, an embarrassing uh, back and forth with some member of the press? No. 
Uh, seething and drooling are, are quite close on the senility scale. I will agree, Alan. Yes. Uh, no, he was seething because AIDS had just shared with him his poll numbers in Michigan and Georgia and that they had dropped over his handling of the war between Israel and Hamas. Uh, both states, of course, Georgia and Michigan are states Biden won narrowly four years ago, and he wouldn't have won the presidency without both of them. He began to shout and swear. Nice Uncle Joe. Uh, a lawmaker who was in the meeting said, because Biden believes that he is doing what is right. Uh, despite the political fallout. Well, you know, doing what is right is typically backing our allies. Doing what is right is typically not giving humanitarian aid to terrorists who will then steal it from the people you intend to give it to and build tunnels to continue to hide from the Israeli Defense Forces. Did you see over the weekend at a hospital in Gaza that the IDF soldiers went into the hospital and shockingly, Hamas terrorists were in the hospital and fired on the IDF soldiers who went into a hospital. Where is the outrage? Where is Pramila Jayapal? Where is Ilhan Omar? Where is All Out Crazy, AOC? That's what AOC stands for, by the way, All Out Crazy. Where are they decrying the fact that there are terrorists in a hospital? Oh, cat got their tongue. Anyway, Biden was mad because he says that uh, he hasn't changed his policy on Israel. He does what is best for the country's national security without, as Merrick Garland would say, fear or favor toward political outcome. If you believe that, um, well, I've got a bridge over the ocean to sell you in uh, Iowa. Uh, frustrations are rippling through the Biden administration with the president himself second-guessing travel decisions and communication strategies that NBC News says have left much of the electorate clueless about his policies. Uh, no, much of the electorate is not clueless about his policies. We are reminded of it every time we go to the gas pump. We are reminded of it every time we go to the store. And orange juice is $7 a gallon, and it used to be three fifty. dollars uh, later on in the show, I will be bringing you details of what former Obama economic advisor Larry Summers tweeted over the weekend, that the inflation numbers are not even beginning to equate the damage that people are feeling in their pocketbooks from Biden's policies, that the numbers, 20% higher prices, when you calculate the drop in real wages, that the numbers are actually worse. And we all feel that. But the president was mad. He was swearing. He was spitting mad. Uh, he says he has not received sufficient credit for an economy that has created 15 million new jobs. I've told you many times he has created 15 million new jobs. The way if I walked to the bathroom and turned on the water, I would create water. That's exactly how he has quote created 15 million new jobs. He has opened the spigot on the American economy because we stopped being terrified of COVID and everybody who was forced to be out of work has gone back to work. He has not created jack squat in terms of jobs. He has allowed the American economy to go back to work. Government does not create jobs. The private sector creates jobs. Well, this government creates jobs because they keep adding jobs to government. So here's why Joe Biden does not go out on the campaign trail. His aides are afraid to let him go out on the campaign trail. And he thinks he needs to go out there and be Joe Biden. OK, so here he was over the weekend being Joe Biden. Yeah, they ought to play that at the end. Visiting Angels is missing it. They ought to just run Biden clips and then their little ditty at the end of his news clips. That would be the best advertisement for sending a visiting angel out to your aging mother or father. I got to say, I stole that from Trump's Instagram. He did that over the weekend. He ran a clip of Biden 
walking into a door. Walking into a door. It wasn't an old clip. It was a fairly recent clip where it was right after the guy in the crowd yelled at Biden. Hey, what do you think of Chuck Schumer telling Israel how to conduct its elections? And Biden's like, huh, wait, I got to go here. I got to go there. And he walks over to a door and he's like, watch out. It's an Audi door. It's not an any door. And the door opened into Joe Biden's face. And Trump added the visiting angels jingle on the end. And I thought, hey, I'm going to steal that from 45 and use that on the show. Use that on the show. What is he talking about? Northern Ireland. and uh, Maybe he needs like the professor from um, what was the musical? Um, My Fair Lady. Maybe he needs that guy. The rain, Joe, the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Of course not, because he's senile, because he's a mush brain. Uh, here's a quote from Adam Smith, Democrat from Washington, who's slightly frustrated with Biden. I had to carefully cross out one of the words in this paragraph, because if I read it, it'd be the last Bruce Willis show ever. He said, Biden stood up in front of the whole world and said, I'm ready. I'm the guy who can take down Donald Trump. So he... Whoo-hoo, better well do it. We don't have time for him to be worried about whether or not people are saying things right or the poll numbers are where they should be. I want focused energy, not defensive anger. By the way, where are the poll numbers? Uh, Biden is at 38% approval at this stage in the calendar, lower than any of the last three presidents who went on to lose re-election. Trump was at 48%. George H.W. Bush was at 39% and Jimmy Carter was at 40 Three percent. Are they panicked on the Democratic side? Well, let's ask Jen O'Malley Dixon, the campaign chairwoman, who, of course, because she works for Joe Biden, is a congenital liar. She says, we know that he lost in 2020, meaning Trump. In order to win, he, Trump again, has to expand his base of voters to find new people to be with him. And that is not something he's shown that he's really focused on. No, it's not something he's really focused on, Jen O'Malley Dixon, although it's happening. Right? Don't we hear every single day more blacks and more Hispanics are more in the Trump camp? Every single day we hear about this. And I got to believe that that is going to manifest itself in the election. Again, am I confident he'll win? No, I'm not confident he'll win because as much as we laugh at the bloodbath portrayal, as much as we assume that. Republicans won't be asleep at the switch in monitoring the voting process in the fall like they were clearly asleep at the switch when the Democrats sent up neon signs that they were going to cheat in the 2020 election or rig it, however you want to say it. I'm not saying they, no, I am saying they counted votes twice. They counted dead people's votes. They stuffed ballot boxes. They illegally counted votes in Pennsylvania. That is all cheating in my mind, 100% cheating. And they're going to do it again if we let them do it again. Get out there and vote early. I'm not afraid of early voting. I think that it's hard to believe like people don't go and vote on election day, but I can't imagine why the Democrats um, can't be overcome on election day. It's got to be things come up and people don't go. So I don't mind voting or, uh, voting early at all. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds this afternoon with a rain or snow shower in spots. It'll be breezy and colder today with a high 36. Tonight becoming cloudy, chilly with a low 27. That might be why that didn't come up because I didn't have the right mouse trying to move. Yes, sir. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Partly sunny, chilly, the high 43. Thick clouds Friday, rain with a high 49. I'm Rose Tamburino on 98.9 FM, The Answer. President Trump calls Matt Dolan unfit to serve in the United States Senate. The feelings mutual. Dolan publicly attacked Trump on Twitter, calling him a liar. He gave more than 20 grand to rhino Republicans who supported Trump's impeachment. 
Dolan said the Republican Party should move on from Trump, and Dolan opposes Trump's America First policies. Dolan says he's not running on the agenda of politicizing Trump, Trump and China. Wrong for Ohio. Send a pro Trump conservative fighter to the Senate. Marino. Breaking news in the Republican race for Ohio's U.S. Senate seat, President Trump now endorsing Bernie Marino. Trump endorsed Bernie Marino. My friend Bernie Marino. My complete and total endorsement. Bernie Marino, the Trump endorsed conservative for Senate. Club for Growth Action is responsible for the content of this act. Paid for by Club for Growth Action, not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Club for Growth Action Monica Hendrick shares a story about the attention to detail the Miller Cabinet's installer had on her bathroom project. Well, I would have to say when they were doing the main bath and they're putting in the cabinetry and then there's a vent on the floor. And the cabinet just didn't quite fit because the vent was just off in the particular position that didn't fit right in the cabinetry. And I said to the installer, I said, that's okay. I have a vent. We can just use it, cut it down and have it fit perfect. No, he said, I will have one made by the end of the day out of cherry. It will fit. <clears throat> yes, he was right. It was put in by the end of the day. So, I mean, it's like, wow, this is definitely special. See, that's professional because he wanted it all fit. Meticulous attention to every detail is why your custom cabinets should be made and installed by Miller Cabinets of Crane City. MillerCabinets.com. Are you ready for an adventure of a lifetime? Journey with me, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, on the Pixis Alaska Cruise this summer. It's an incredible opportunity to engage with me and other like-minded patriots on an epic seven-day cruise over Fourth of July weekend. Witness the untouched wilderness of Alaska while discussing America's future. What could be better? Join me from June 29th to July 6th. Call 855-565-5519 or reserve online. Patriots. AlaskaCruise.com. Attention business owners, 60 seconds and owners, this one's open. taxpayers with not so simple tax returns. If you're not getting timely and useful financial advice throughout the year from your accountant, why not? I'm CPA Brad Hennebert from Premier Tax CPAs, and the true value of using a CPA is getting guidance throughout the year, not just at tax time. During the year, we can actively advise you on your financial, tax planning, and other major business needs, just like an outside CFO. Too often, when you see your accountant only at tax time, we're really only keeping score of what you did last year. At Premier Tax CPAs, we like to have monthly consultations with our business clients because important financial information is only useful if it's timely. See us before April 15th for a free copy of my latest book, The Ohio Business Owner's Tax Survival Guide. At Premier Tax CPAs, we're a firm that can work with you and your business throughout the year to help you make seconds. decisions before it's too late. Give us a call at 614-524-4888. That's 614-524-4888. So it's supposed to get cold this week, which I'm voting no on that. I'm ready for summer. I'm ready for spring. I'm ready for warm weather. I'm ready for a great steak. Do you like grilling steak on your patio? If you do, don't mess around with store-bought steak. Why would you pay the same price in the store for the best steak you can get? And it's shipped right to your door, flash frozen. And it comes from a ranch out west owned by one family. It's a big ranch. They sell this steak all over the country. It is all rated USDA Choice and Prime. Go in your local store today. Try to find USDA Choice and Prime. I don't know if you can. I know you'll pay more for it. And I know it won't be no hormones, no antibiotics ever. It'll be a mystery because you won't know, was this cow ever sick or not? It wasn't bred with perfect marbling. That is what the guarantee you get with RiverbendRanchSteaks.com. And we have a convenient website for you to go and set up your order every month or every other month. It is RiverbendRanchSteaks.com backslash Bruce Hooley. RiverbendRanchSteaks.com backslash Bruce Hooley. <clears throat> so in the 12 o'clock hour, we are going to have Brendan Shea, Madison County Commissioner, joining us at 12.05, Patty Hamilton, uh, candidate for the uh, state house in uh, Madison County and uh, Jason County is joining us at 1235. Uh, I have recorded a video on uh, my social media channels that tell you who I'm going to vote for. So uh, that's an endorsement. If I'm going to vote for them, then I have a lot of people ask me, text me, who should I vote for? Uh, so I thought I'd just do a social media video to tell you. And I'm going to vote for Bernie Moreno. 
I'm going to vote for Bernie Moreno for Senate. I'm going to vote for Bernie Moreno for Senate with no doubt in my mind that he is an America first fighter, an outsider, a guy who has built businesses, a guy who is an immigrant to this country, who became a citizen and who is a family man. And you know how I know Bernie Moreno is a threat to the left? Because they're coming after him with everything they have to smear him unjustifiably. A uh, story came up late last week. I didn't want to talk about it until I had spoken to some people about it. But this is the Associated Press. And I was so glad to see yesterday that the Moreno family is thinking of suing the Associated Press. And Bernie has the coin to do it for this clear smear of him meant to separate him from authentic conservatives and make them wonder. I got a phone call from one last night. Hey, you know, uh, you've in the past told me Bernie Moreno is a good guy. Uh, but man, these commercials that I'm seeing on TV, uh, they worry me. Well, they're coming from Matt Dolan, who is not an authentic conservative. And they're coming from a left-wing organization, the Associated Press. Again, I tell you all the time, if you're being smeared, it's because you're over the target. It's because you bothered the other side. The devil leaves you alone when he's got you in his clutches and he owns you. When does the adversity come for an authentic Christian? When you're damaging Satan's attempt to hoodwink and mislead the world. Same in politics. Why do they come after Trump so hard? Why do they lie about the bloodbath comment? Why do they come after J.D. Vance? Why do they come after Bernie Moreno? Because they fear them. And those are the people that you want to put in office. So this smear campaign, and I don't want to go into detail about it because I don't want you to fixate on the details, but I got to give you enough of the details so you know what it's about. Uh, they dug up an online profile from uh, 16 years ago that had one post about uh, Bernie Moreno seeking companionship through a website that was LGBTQ friendly. Uh, Bernie has a beautiful family. I know his daughter, Emily, I know his son-in-law, Max, I know his wife, Bridget. Bernie Moreno is and has been for a long time a happily married man, and you have seen the evidence of that in the way that he stood by his wife, Bridget, during her breast cancer. This is such a laugh. When I read it, I'm like, this is so laughable, okay? So the AP story says that they confirmed, listen to how insidious and careful they write this. The AP review confirmed that someone with access to Marino's email account, created the profile, though the AP could not definitively confirm whether it was created by Marino himself. So I have a question, Associated Press. Why are you writing this? If you can't confirm that he, that it was in fact his profile, if you can't confirm it, why are you publishing it? We all know why they're publishing it. To smear him. Right before the election. Profile's been around for 16 years, could have written it at any point, held on to it until the final weekend before the primary. Shocker. Then they actually get a statement from a guy who was an intern for Bernie Moreno's companies who said he created the account as part of a prank later on in the story. They say that they talked to another Moreno aide from how Bernie ran his businesses. And... They say that it was commonplace in the Marino companies for people who were interns to have roles and duties that included checking emails. So they'd have the passwords, they'd have access to the email accounts. If they wanted to create a profile as a juvenile prank, do you think they'd have ever written this story about Sherrod Brown? Do you think they'd have ever written this story? about Alison Russo, or about any Democratic candidate, or about Hunter Biden, even. A sexual deviant drug addict, violator of federal gun law. Do you think they'd have ever written this story about them? You know the answer, it's no. Of course they wouldn't. But they save it until the very last minute, minimizing the amount of time that Bernie Moreno has to respond to it, landing their quote unquote October surprise, 
trying to smear a good man who wants to do good things for the country and a trash fake Republican like Matt Dolan is whispering about this, trying to make hay off of it. Of course they did. Of course they did. Oh, speaking of Hunter Biden, look at this story. Yes, look at this story from John Solomon, Just the News. While his father was still vice president, Hunter Biden and his business partners tried unsuccessfully to help a Chinese energy firm acquire one of the United States premier nuclear energy companies in a secret attempt to control the global market. This evidence has been turned over to Congress as part of Biden's impeachment inquiry. So we're, you're all thinking like, oh, what's the name of this like company we never heard of that's a big player in energy? Uh, Westinghouse. Has anybody ever heard of Westinghouse? Hunter Biden's trying to get a Chinese energy company to buy Westinghouse's nuclear arm to tilt the balance of power and influence in the U.S. nuclear energy uh, trade to China. Congressional investigators recently recently obtained new memo, news memo, no, new memos, I'm sorry, and testimony about the nature of the plan to help CEFC, you've heard about that, right? That's the Chinese energy company that hired Hunter gain a larger foothold in the global nuclear energy market by acquiring Westinghouse. One of Hunter Biden's former business partners, Rob Walker, you've heard of him, he's testified before Congress, told Congress the future first son was involved providing a letter to make the Chinese comfortable with the plan. Rob Walker told lawmakers, Hunter Biden, quote, had an interesting last name that would probably get people in the door. Influence peddling, all this. There are so many things that authentic, balanced reporters could dig up on Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. The problem is not the amount of things that they could dig up. The problem is we don't have enough authentic, balanced reporters. John Solomon is one of them. There's some at the Daily Wire. There's some at Town Hall, Red State, other in Breitbart. Um, but this is part and parcel, right? Hey. Maybe there's something over here with Bernie Moreno. We can't confirm it, but let's run it. Then with Hunter Biden, when we have like hundreds of bank records of financial transactions, we have congressional testimony, text messages, WhatsApp messages, voice recordings, photographs of Hunter Biden from his former business partners, testimony about oligarchs calling dinners or being at dinners where Joe Biden called in. All of that is see no evil, hear no evil, tell no truth. Brendan Shea, Madison County Commissioner candidate, next on the Bruce Hooley Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, check the rest of the show on the 989 The Answer Facebook page or on the Bruce Hooley Show Facebook page. We'll be back tomorrow on primary day. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Hope you have a blessed day. Um, challenge you to do what I do every day. Read a chapter of Proverbs that comes, that, that corresponds to the date of the month. Pour that small dose of truth into your mind every single day. It'll align you with how God thinks because the culture certainly will not do that. Uh, that has been of uh, extreme benefit to me as I try to uh, access and analyze the issues of the day. Um, it won't make you popular, but it will fortify you with the truth. And in the end, that's what really matters. So I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.